Schumacher Citadel Defense, and today we've got a fun one for you. I have here printed out an article, You Don't Need a Handgun, by Mr. Jack Crosby. Well, if you want to write an article about guns, I suggest you do some research next time. Now, this one is, of course, posted on Splinter News, a reliable news organization. I'm going to try to link the uh, article that I read here below, uh, as well as some of the articles that I referenced, so you can read the thing for yourself so that you know I'm not making this up or taking it out of context. And here we go. Opening paragraph. There's a new study out today on gun ownership in America, but this survey lends weight to something that seems like a very clear truth to me. You do not need to own a handgun. Hey, Jack, I'm really glad that you want to talk about data and studies and truths and things that we can verify. Jack, just real quick, have you heard of the 2013 CDC study? No? Oh, well, this is going to be fun. Just real quick side note, you see, in 2013, the CDC did a study under the Obama years because they wanted to verify, you know, how useless guns are in actual self-defense. Well, it turns out that guns are used to defend yourself in America, on average, somewhere between about 500,000 to 3 million times a year. Now, that is interesting. I'm sure you're going to talk about that in this article. Now... Jack goes on. His big point here is that while overall gun ownership in houses has decreased, handgun ownership in those houses has increased. So people own, overall, there are less homes with guns in them, but the homes that have guns have more handguns. Child deaths from firearms peaked in the late 70s and early 1980s, were on the decline again until 2001, the study says. The rates have started to increase again nearly doubling over the past decade from 0.36 per 100,000 to 0.63 per 100,000. Now we're going to get into the juicy quotes. <clears throat> this is just one piece of evidence to make a case that we should not have to argue anymore. We don't have to argue it anymore? Are you nuts? You do not need to own a handgun. If you own one and you have a small child, that child is at risk. Quick thought here, Jack. Maybe my child would be at risk if, you know, someone else were to come in here and, I don't know, threaten their life. Just a quick thought, Jack. Maybe my child is at risk from violent crime that seems to be on a recent uptick recently. Jack, do you have kids? Do you want to protect them at all? Are you at all curious about making sure they survive into their adult years? If you own a handgun, there is a chance it will kill your child. Jack, you've obviously never shot guns, have you? Jack, I just want to explain something to you real quick. See, in the gun world, we have these things called safety rules. In fact, there are four universal gun safety rules. I'll let you find those yourself. That child will make a mistake, or you will make a mistake, and your child will be dead. Every time I make a mistake, my child's gonna die? A handgun is small. The geometry of where the barrel is pointing when it goes off is particularly deadly compared to a more cumbersome firearm. What does that even mean? What, what does geometry have to do with it? Is he talking about angles? Do guns not point the same when they're handguns? The geometry of where the barrel is pointing when it goes off is particularly deadly. What does that mean? Handguns exist for one reason, to kill human beings. Jack, it just turns out that handgun bullets are pretty anemic. They don't actually kill people very often. They're not very effective at that job. Nobody wants to kill anybody here, Jack. We just want to make sure people don't get killed. That's why we have guns. Same reason the police have them. An AR-15 or other military-style rifle is built for killing people, but that's an argument for another day. Oh, <laughs> you better believe it's an argument for another day. I'll be happy to have that one, too. You don't hunt with a handgun. Uh, yes, you do. People hunt with handguns all the time. I'm sure people do it. I've been at the range and shot one of those big Colt pythons that someone sticks a scope on or whatever. But you're an asshole and an idiot if you do that. Why? Why are you an asshole if you put a scope on your gun? What makes that idiotic? We put scopes on guns so that we can more easily see the target to hit what we want to hit. Why are you an idiot for doing that? But shooting handguns is fun, you might say. Oh, hell yeah, I'd say it's fun. But it is not so fun that it is worth thousands of preventable deaths. Preventable deaths? Oh, this is gonna be fun. I'm so glad we brought up preventable deaths because I actually looked up the data on preventable deaths for children. 
turns out the leading cause of accidental deaths for children, transportation related accidents at a whopping 9.8 deaths per 100,000. So remember, firearms were a big deal because they rose to 0.63 per 100,000. 0.63 per 100,000? 9.8 per 100,000. I would say we need some common sense transportation related laws. It's almost like there's an epidemic of transportation related child deaths. I mean, hey, if we're upset about 0.64 deaths per 100,000, 9.8 should be like World War III plus Hitler plus Stalin plus Mao plus the nuclear holocaust plus an alien invasion all wrapped up into one package. By the way, 9.8 is just the tip of the iceberg. Drowning. 1.4 per 100,000. Suffocation, 1 1.2 per 100,000. Poisoning, 0 0.8 per 100,000. Fire and burns, 0 0.7. How's everybody getting burned all the time? We're getting to the really juicy stuff. Do you need a handgun for self-defense? Yes! No, you do not. If you are so desperately afraid and insecure that you must keep a firearm in your home. Wait, wait, stop. Did we just forget about carrying a gun out in public? because you're only gonna be assaulted in your home all of a sudden? Is this like some secret ploy for like long gun open carry? Jack, if it is, buddy, you're my best friend. Insecure that you must keep a firearm in your home? Get a shotgun. Out of my house! Which is easier to secure. What? Okay, really, let's think about this for a second. A shotgun and a handgun, shotgun is larger, that's easier to secure. How could that possibly be the case? Do you know what trigger locks are? How about a gun lock that comes with every gun that you buy? You seen one of those? Wouldn't a smaller safe for a smaller gun make it easier to secure than a larger case for a larger gun? Jack, have you ever shot a shotgun? Easier to use. God, he thinks it's easier to use. Jack, there is no possible way a pump gun is easier to use than a semi-automatic handgun. Okay, let me explain something in case you don't know. This is a semi-automatic pistol. To operate a semi-automatic pistol, you take a box of bullets, you put it in the handgun. Then, you rack the slide in that handgun. Now, this is a loaded pistol, ready to operate. All you need to do is simply pull the trigger, and then the gun will go off. When it's out of bullets, I simply eject the box of bullets, get a new box of bullets, put it back in the gun, repeat, and now I'm ready to go again. This is a shotgun. In order to load a shotgun, you take one shell. Insert that one shell into the gun. Repeat until the gun is full. Should I drop that one? Once your shotgun is full of bullets, simply Run the action. Don't forget, on most modern shotguns, there is a safety. If you forget to push that before you pull the trigger, the gun will not work. After you pull the trigger, simply run the action again. Do this until the gun is empty. Hey Dylan, how many how many rounds does a shotgun hold? Uh, about four or five, kind of depending on the gun. Is five still less than 17 in this world? Hey Dylan, what happens if I kind of short stroke that that pump action a little bit. You've caused a malfunction. Gun won't work. Are, are, are you saying that a shotgun might be, might be a little harder to use for someone who doesn't know? And the capstone, far less likely to penetrate the walls of your house. Now, let's be fair here. It does depend on what the gun is loaded with. Now, if your gun is loaded with double up buck, which it should be, that is the equivalent of nine, nine millimeter bullets loaded into your shotgun. So actually, the penetration is the exact same. Now, if you got a one ounce slug in that shotgun, that thing will probably like go through four houses before it stops. I mean, literally to write that, you would have to have no idea of what you're talking about. You've never taken a gun course, have you? It's just physics, Jack. I mean, I'm not, I'm not making this up. It's just physics. I mean, seriously, how could you even write that? I don't even understand. You obviously have no idea what you're talking about. You're just making stuff up now. What's the shotgun obsession in America? It's like everybody who knows nothing about guns always just says to get a shotgun because they don't know any better. Is like shotgun just like the one word that people use? Do people just see shotguns in movies and think they sound cool? 
I mean, it does sound cool. I just don't understand on what universe you would think a shotgun is easier to operate, easier to secure, and will penetrate less than a handgun. Here's what happens when you try to shoot a handgun in self-defense. Oh, this will be good. There is a good chance you will miss. Uh, that's why we practice? Or you will hit something you didn't mean to hit. Uh, that's why we practice? Most likely, most likely, most likely, most likely, what happens is that the other person who has a gun shoots you first. Wait a second, did we just admit that someone else has a gun and they're breaking into your house to threaten you with that gun? And your solution is, don't have a gun yourself? Why would you even think that's a good idea? Oh, hello, robber man. We are soy boys here in this house. And uh, if you'd like to come into my house and take my things and abduct my children and my wife, I will just stand passively by, please. If you could please be sure to return them when you're done, I would appreciate it. Shoots you first. Shoot them back. Or takes your gun and shoots you with it. Oh, my God. That literally never happens. I mean, please, can, can someone, can just anyone, show me one documented case of a civilian getting their gun stripped from them and then used against them. I would love to see that case. And then I would love to see it add up to more than 500,000, which is how many times, at the bare minimum, people use guns to defend themselves. And it's not even gonna get close to three million. Let's be honest. Oh God, oh God, I need to start drinking. I need to start drinking more. Just, is this like a movie myth? Where does this thing come from that people think this happens? The fact is, Hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of mostly untrained Americans use guns to defend themselves every year. And they're not getting their guns stripped from them in the hundreds of thousands. Are, are you stupid? I mean, are you literally that dumb? Can you not do math at this point in your life? Or you manage to shoot them, but they shoot you back. It's a gunfight. What do you expect is going to happen? Someone's going to get shot. What, 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 what's the alternative here? They just shoot you or take your stuff or pillage your house or abduct your kids. I don't understand what the other options are. Do I want to get shot? Of course I don't want to get shot. That's why I have body armor. I got so mad I, I broke my clipboard. Do you want to get shot? These are great. The cops who are trained to shoot handguns at people shoot the wrong people all the time. Jack, real quick, you know what the average uh, training is a police officer receives on a firearm every year? It's just 16 hours. It's really not that much. They're not as trained as you think they are. Hey, could part of the reason that cops miss a lot be that certain cities like New York City mandate having heavier trigger pulls on handguns because they think it's a safety issue? I'm guessing you have no idea what that means, but let me just spell it out for you. When you have a heavier trigger pull on a handgun, it makes it harder to shoot. Man, if only there was a way to like do some research before you wrote articles. You are not going to stop a crime. If you do stop a crime, you will be an extreme outlier to a trend that overwhelmingly results in the death of innocence. What does that even mean? So, because some people, tragically, accidentally die, everybody else needs to die because they shouldn't defend themselves. Why expose yourself to that? Expose yourself to what? I still don't understand what you mean. Why bring that into the equation? Because I don't want to die. We carry guns because we want to live. When people are shooting weapons at one another, no one is in control. It's a fight. Of course no one is in control. Have you ever been in a fight in your life? Real quick, the idea in a fight is to win the fight so that then you are in control. If the bad guy wins a fight because you don't have a gun, then he's in control. Then the bad guy gets to decide what happens. Spoiler alert, it's nothing good. You don't need a handgun. Hey man, if you don't want a handgun, that's fine. But, uh, I'm gonna keep mine.